Good evening, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important tropical matter. And this morning, we are going to talk about, or well, this evening, I should say, we're going to talk about, you know, Mr. Cornice's refusal to have his statutory declarations certified. Now, this has been an ongoing matter, and I understand that from 2000, you know, even in 2019, I shouldn't say from, but in 2019, when Mr. Holness was supposed to have declared his statutory declarations, that was also a problem. And the PNP had to pressure him to declare, right, and to certify, to have his statutory declaration certified. It is unclear at this point whether Mr. Mr. Holness has the powers to also declare it himself or to certify the document himself or that it has to be certified by the National Integrity Commission. Now, what is very interesting is that we tend to be, as citizens, we tend to want to defend the interests and be loyal to our politicians, to the politicians that we think we are voting for. And individuals tend to believe that Mr. Honus is clean, at least those who are GLP, they think that Mr. Honus is clean and that the, the International, the Integrity Commission, the Integrity Commission, they are the ones who are holding up the document from being certified. We, the, the, um, the opposition leader also, that is um, Mark Golding, is on record of saying that Mr. Honus's statutory declarations cannot be certified. And when he used those wor that word cannot, I am wondering what does Mr. Honus, Mr. Mr. Golding mean when he says that Mr. Honus's statutory declarations cannot be certified? What does he mean? Because you can imply two things, right? He could only imply two things that the document has been submitted, but it cannot be verified. What he has listed, what he has included in that document cannot be verified or that his declarations have not yet been submitted, right? We don't know which category um, that might fall in, right? Only Mr. Golding will be able to express to us what is happening in terms of, has Mr. Holness declared, has he submitted his statutory declarations for analysis, for examination by the, Integrity, the National Integrity Association or the Integrity Commission? Right, I'm not sure if he has done that. But let us look at some things here that, you know, some information coming from new sources, right? Um, we're going to look, because we don't want to guess. We want to be able to bring the facts. Not sure why this is not opening at the moment. Um, let me see what is happening here. Um, okay, it's this is not opening up. I had an article here from the Gleaner. And it seems like it is not about to be opened up. Let me see if I could close this window here. I hate when I come online with everything, with all my receipts, and it's impossible to open up what I want to open up. Let me give me a few seconds here. Um, let me see if I could. Okay, good. Is it? No, I can't. Yeah, it is not there. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's look at, let me go back to my email and see if I can pull up that document. So I look unprepared, even though I'm not unprepared, but sometimes you come online and just as you're about to read the document, it just cannot be accessed, even though it could be accessed before you came online. Something that is a mystery for those of us who are working, you know, presenting videos and other things. You're making presentations and everything is up and running. And then when you are online, it cannot be accessed. So let me see if this is what the document is. Yes, yeah, so this is what I was looking for. Let me see if I can share my screen with you quickly. So before it disappears, because, you know, a lot of mysteries happen when you are online that can embarrass you, as it were. Now, so let me share my screen. And let us see if we can look at the this article here. This is coming from the Gleaner, and it's that it's titled. What's going on here now? It's titled "Integrity Commission's Processes Related to Holness's Statutory De Declarations Nearing Completion," and this was published on July 9th, two thousand twenty-four. So fairly recent, 
right, some weeks ago. Um, the Integrity Commission, Jamaica's main anti-corruption agency, said its processes involving income and assets, declarations by Prime Minister Antiphonis, are nearing completion. Right, And for those of you who do not understand that statutory declarations mean the, that the Prime Minister has declared his assets, his liabilities, and his income of not only himself, but his wife and also his children. And this should be done on a yearly basis based on the National Integrity Act of the Integrity Commission. Now, it's not sure why the National Integrity Commission or the, Integ the Integrity Commission, you know, has imposed such a stringent rule. Why a yearly declaration of his assets? Why not a bi-yearly? Because it seems to me that the prime ministers and the ministers of government are having problems declaring, making a yearly declaration of their statutory declarations. Now, I do not understand that, but it seems to me that there's a problem in terms of, you know, particularly the prime minister and Andrew Holness has a dubious record of not submitting his statutory declarations on time, right? Or, or of not having them certified. But on this platform, I would like to know what does it mean to be certified? And we understand also that it's not a detailed account of his income and his assets and his liabilities. It's just a summary. So why is it taking that long? Why has the process been delayed? Are we having some hanky-panky here and skulldoggery, as is very common for our Jamaican politicians? Now, the Commission's Chairman, Justice Seymour Panton, gave the update in his remarks in the agency's annual report for 2023-2024 that was stabled in the House of Representatives on Tuesday afternoon. Police's declarations for 2021 have not been certified, which has affected subsequent submissions. So his submissions for 2021 have not yet been certified. The issue has been a major source of political controversy, especially with general elections just over a year away. Justice Panton acknowledged public questions about the issue, saying much has been written and said over the non-certification of Ponis's declarations. He noted that the Director of Information and Complaints is required to examine decorate the decorations and inform the commission once he is satisfied that they are completed, right? It must be remembered that to satisf satisfy himself of the due completion of a statutory declaration, the director of information and complaints shall make such inquiries as he considers necessary. The inquiries are aimed at determining accuracy, he said, with reference to the Integrity Commission Act. You know, and I read the act, you know, and... It's a long document, I think, of over 70-something pages. And it's quite detailed with legalistic terminologies and jargons, right? So the ordinary Jamaican is not going to understand what that document contains because the language is quite legalistic, right? It is couched in legal terminologies and jargons. So it's very, you know, it's not a difficult document to read, but based on what I have read um, in the sections that... um constitute that National Integrity Act, Integrity Act, the prime minister or any member of government who, you know, um, do not declare their statutory information can, are liable to some sort of legal chastisement, legal punishment. And it is there identified. I'm not sure why the Integrity Commission has not applied such rules to our politicians, particularly uh, the prime minister. Because if the prime minister is in breach of the law, then he has to suffer the penalties of the law because there's nothing special about him. He's only the leader, but he is tasked with upholding the constitution and the laws that govern the constitution and the people. So Mr. Mr. Holness needs to understand that there is nothing particularly special about him He's not king as he thinks he is. Panton added, given the restrictions imposed by the actors regards statutory declarations generally and matters related thereto, I may only say that the processes of the commission are nearing completion in respect of the prime minister's declarations. What does he mean by this? Right? Here again, or people tend, we like to use hyperloading language. And at the end of the day, it's saying nothing. Why has the process been delayed? 
And can the Integrity Commission give us a date, a specific date, when the declarations will be published? We don't want to hear that it's nearing completion. What does that mean, that it's nearing completion? Will it be published or will it be certified very shortly, by next Monday or tomorrow? What do you mean by that? In February, Holness confirmed that he was in the process of providing initial information sought by the commission. In an interview on Nationwide Radio on Monday, Holness said he and the commission have had further exchanges. And this is what Mr. Pat, Mr. Holness is saying, and I quote, they have written to me, I have written back to them, they have written to me, I have written back to them, and it is still a matter for the Integrity Commission. Like you, I too am anxious to have this matter resolved. He said, now, this is like a circle, right? This is a game. This is a circular game in which he says, she says. And we don't know if the prime minister is speaking the truth because neither the, Integ the, the Integrity Commission nor the prime minister is really approaching the matter with any amount of transparency, right? They are behaving as if Jamaicans are stupid and perhaps we are stupid in the way in which we behave and the loyalty that we ascribe to our politicians. And perhaps we deserve that sort of treatment by the politicians because they are monarchs, as I have been saying, as I have been intimating on this program, on my show. Holness didn't give specifics on the inquiries, but he said that the commission has been examining his personal finances going back several years. So what is taking them time to do it? if they have been examining his finances several years you know, to date, right? And we know that in 2021, his statutory declarations have not been certified. And also in 2019, what, why was it that he also refused to have submitted or to have his statutory declarations be certified on time? The oppositional people, the oppositional party, the opposition party had to force him, right, had to put a lot of pressure on him for that to have been published and certified. That takes time because it is just not my response alone that they have to await. They have to await the responses of several other agencies. It's a very detailed process. Now, this is a summary. According to what the National Integrity Act suggests, it's only a summary of the prime ministers or the opposition leaders um, income and liabilities and assets. So what is taking them a long time if it is just a summary? Why does it have to take years for them to write a summary? Right? To give a, just a, yeah, that's what it is, a synopsis of his assets, liabilities, and his income. Right? It's not a detailed account. Yet the prime minister is pretending as if the members of the Integrity Commission are these special people who are working laboriously, right? And then they blame our teachers, our teachers are not doing anything. And these people, you do not know why they are working and what they're doing. They're just, you know, pulling up big salaries and they're not doing anything. Asked about the political implications for him, the prime minister said, and I quote, I have followed the process as best as I can, and I can only await the Integrity Commission. So we don't know, again, we're playing gymnastics here. If it is that the Integrity Commission are the ones to be blamed, or Mr. Mr. Holness is the one to be blamed, we don't know, right? We just can take him at his word. And they also say things that are not clear. They're just using, you know, language, empty language. I am in an invidious position because I am the one that has to ensure that the law is respected and therefore you will never hear me make any comment, even if I feel it has been unfair and unduly so to me. What does he mean by that? What is unfair to him? There's nothing unfair to you, Mr. 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 Patterson, Mr. Holness. Why am I calling you Mr. Patterson? Mr. Holness, right? There is nothing, absolutely nothing unfair to you, right? The law suggests that you should have your statutory declarations be certified yearly and you're part of the government, you are the incumbent, so you've got to do what the law tells you, demands you to do, right? You are not, as I'm saying, you're 
apart from being the leader, there's nothing special. You are the servant of the people and not their, you know, their sovereign. You're behaving as if you're a sovereign and the people are vassals. And you're heading this vassalage, right? This vassalage called Jamaica. That's what you're that's how you're behaving. That is how you are behaving, Mr. Honus. And you need to stop that behavior. You need to humble yourself and do what you need to do. The Integrity Commission is blocked by law from commenting on its investigations until a report is tabled in Parliament. All right. So why is that report not tabled in Parliament? And Mr. Golding, Mr. Mark Golding, I'm calling on you. You are suggesting that yours, you know, have already been certified. The declarations have been certified. Why is there not a report tabled in Parliament? Because this has been an ongoing matter since 2021. Right? For the for for, for the Integrity Commission to publish and a report about what is happening. So it means therefore that Parliament and the Integrity Commission are in bed together and they're not working in the interest of the Jamaican people. Under the law, a summary of the certified declarations for the Prime Minister and the opposition leader are to be published. Those for opposition leader Mark Golding have been published. The status of the 2023 submissions is expected to be published later this year, right? So this is what we're seeing happening in Jamaica, that we have two Jamaicans. You have one Jamaica for the politicians and for the financial elites, and you have another Jamaican for the citizens, the vassals, the subjects, right? Who have to obey the law, or if they do not obey the law, then the penalties will be applied, right? And they will be applied diligently, right? To those who do not obey the laws of the land, right? But we have, however, the prime minister and his monarchs, his, his, his colleagues can do whatever they want to do. And Jamaicans are not concerned about that because they are just concerned about being loyalists, being political loyalists and tribes. And that's why the country will never develop. It will be never never developed because our people are not, you know, fair, they're not objective, and we do not have the capacity to think and to reason rationally, right? Everybody has taken their side and they think that they should be JLP loyalists or they should be PNP loyalists and they should not be people who are loyal to the truth, right? You should have a loyalty, a commitment to listening to the truth and not to hear what your party officials or leaders, you know, want to tell you. And you believe every word that they tell you, right? You believe every word that they tell you without critically assessing what they say. Right? And you're attacking me every day. Wow, you know, the JLP will never leave office and the PNP will never come back to office. Who cares about whether the PNP comes back to office or not? Right? Who cares about that? What I'm concerned about, what I am concerned about is the fate of Jamaica and the fact that the corruption in Jamaica is becoming untenable. And our citizens need to understand what is happening and many of them do not have a clue of what is happening and what our political leaders are doing and it is my responsibility as a thinking person to educate and to inform and to expose right so i'm not here to play games with any of you and the society is so corrupt to the core that people are writing me and they're saying asking me who is paying me to do what I'm doing? Nobody's paying me to do what I'm doing. In fact, I didn't even want to do it. But we are responsible when God has blessed us with a certain amount of abilities to stand up and to speak out. Though the heavens fall. Though the heavens fall, we've got to stand up and speak out. And I'm very surprised that the Governor General, Patrick Allen, Sir Patrick Allen, is not speaking out, right? As a minister of, 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 of the gospel, he's not speaking out. I'm not saying there should be 
a merger of church and state. I mean, there is already a merger of church and state, a fusion of church and state in Jamaica because, you know, the Queen and the Anglican Church and whatever. So the, the position that he occupies is a symbolic office of the fusion of the merger of church and state. So don't tell me about the merger of church and state right now and the separation of powers, right? Because he should be saying to the prime minister, it's now time for you to have the document certified or to speak to members of the Integrity Commission. And stop playing games with the Jamaican people. The law should be fair and should be dispensed to all citizens. Right? On a fair-based basis. It should not be just a law for one segment of the population and another law for another segment of the population. But as we have been suggesting here, and this has been an ongoing matter for many years, for decades, that there are two Jamaicas, right? That there are two Jamaicas. Now, let us go to some things that Mr. Holness, this is coming from the Gleaner. I can't remember, yeah, but yes, let me see if I could pull up the, yeah, the 17th of October, 2022, that this article was published, all right? So try to follow me. I'm trying to be as... Um, meticulous in my presentation as best as possible. These are not my words. These, these are the words coming from your officials, right? And I'm neither PNP nor GLP and do not want to be neither of them because I find them to be despicable. Now, let me see. Could I remove this here? It's sort of blocking my, my view. Yeah, let's send it up here. Oh, stay there. Please stay there. Okay, so we have Integrity Commission not in a position to certify PM's statutory declaration. And this was the, the Integrity Commission says a document outlining the incomes and assets of Prime Minister Andrew Holness has not been published because it has not yet been certified. The Commission is not in a position to certify it and in the circumstances will be unable to comment any further on the issue. So what is their job if, they, if it's not to comment on the issue? Right. If the people are asking, why has the prime minister's statutory declarations not, you know, why has why have they not been certified? Right. If they're asking the question why the prime minister's statutory declarations have not been certified, why can't we get a rational response from the integrity commission? What is going on in Jamaica? Polis submitted the document, also referred to as statutory declaration, because it is required by law on time, the commission said. Right? What, what are they saying? Just, just talk, just words. Nothing is really coming from them. Now, this is what the, I found interesting. The Gleaner, right? The lady on North Street, right? That's what they call her. The Gleaner sought clarity on the commission's statement that it was not in a position to certify. Because what does that mean? The prime minister's statutory declaration. Now, is it statutory declaration or statutory declarations? Can we make it clear? I don't know. Sometimes I'm seeing statutory declaration and some, in some cases I see statutory declarations, right? I use both interchangeably. In a terse response last um, evening, the commission said, now, this is the commission responding, the Integrity Commission responding to the Gleaner, right? And I quote, the position is that we have no commitment to make, we, we have no comment, rather, not commitment, I'm sorry. We have no comment to make on the matter. Now, they are responding to the Gleaner, who is responsible to, to, um, to actually inform the Jamaican people. It is the responsibility of the Gleaner and among the other media houses there to inform the people about what government is doing or not doing and the corrupt activities in which they might be engaged. And this now is the Integrity Commission, right? An anti-corruption watchdog speaking to the Gleaner like this. The position is that we have no comment to make on the matter. Right? Now, for what purpose are you serving? Right? Whose interest are you working in? In whose interest 
are you working? Yeah? This is what I would like to ask the Integrity Commission because it seems to me that they have crossed here a line. But we're living in a society in Jamaica in which people don't read, people don't engage in intellectual stuff. So all they do is like to hurl epithets at people who are trying to unveil and to unmask and to unearth the going on, the goings on in Jamaica. Right? Opposition leader Mark Golding's declaration was published on Sunday and has been reported on by the Sunday Gleaner. The Integrity Commission Hairband certifies that the statutory declaration submitted by the above named declarant has been examined. And that's it, right? That is it. They don't have any sort of regard for the Jamaican people. And they do not think that they have an obligation to say why the Prime Minister's declarations, statutory declarations, have not yet been certified. It, it appears that it's not in the remit. So why are you there? Why did we even, you know, create that institution, right? And that is one of the things that Mr. Pat, Dr. Patterson, Dr. Orlando Patterson has in his books, that, you know, the institutions of Barbados are much more robust and the institutions in Jamaica are not working in our interest, right? We do not have robust institutions. We have institutions, but they are not accountable to the people. And because of a lack of education among our citizens, then our politicians are just free to do whatever they want to do. And occasionally, you will get some corruption reporting, some reporting on corruption. But it's really a nine-day wonder. Nothing happens because the, the media houses want to portray this impression that they're still alive and running and that they have not fully lost their credibility. But they have lost their credibility because they should have really delved further into the matter and say, why? Why are you even in existence? If you cannot report and give us a rational reason for which the Prime Minister's statutory declarations have not yet been certified. What is calling, causing the del delay? What has caused the delay in that process? And we understand it's just a summary again, it's just a summary of his income, his assets, and his liabilities. Not only his, but you know, his wives and his children, his two, his two sons. And Juliet, Juliet should be ensuring that the Prime Minister, Prime Minister's um, statutory declarations are certified. She's working with him, right? And she's working in the Jamaica's parliament as the Speaker of the House. And her husband's statutory declarations have not yet been certified, right? And it is a summary, it is not a detailed account as it were, it is just a summary. So what is causing that delay? This is the question that I'd like to pose and I'm not hearing a compelling answer. It is, oh, what do you want the prime minister to do? The prime minister has already submitted his document and the integrity commission has not yet certified them. What do you want him to do? That is always the response, the robotic response which suggests to me that Jamaican people do not have any brain. Something is wrong with the ability to think. Now, the, let us listen to the prime minister because there's something I would like to say. The question I would like to ask, can the prime minister declare his own statutory declarations? And let us look at what he's going to say here. Let me see if I can share again my screen with you so we can listen to what. And this was reported way back in 2019 when the Prime Minister also was, you know, enmeshed in hot waters about not declaring his statutory declarations, uh, well, not having them certified on time, right? So let us listen to what this reporter is saying. Primetime News special welcome to the folks watching on OneSpotMedia.com. 
Our first this evening, after weeks of delay, the Integrity Commission today published the Prime Minister's statutory declarations. This after calls from the opposition People's National Party, as well as National Integrity Action. But what do the declarations show? More in this report. I'm hopeful that before the week is out, the, the Integrity Commission will make public my declarations. If not, I will have to possibly do it myself. That promise from Prime Minister... So this is what the Prime Minister is saying, that if his declarations then in 2019 was not made, was not certified, right, then he will have to do it for himself, right? That's what he said. That's what he said. Those are not my words. And, you know, when I made the video last week on about Mr. Holness's, you know, lack of, you know, his, his non-certification of his statutory declarations, you know, somebody responded to me, mi amigo, you know, I'm saying to her that you're not my friend, but, you know, but, you know, she said, mi amigo, um, the, the, the prime minister cannot de declare his own or cannot certify, she, she said, his statutory declarations. And, you know, I didn't infer that on my video, but she, that's what she said. Now we're hearing from the prime minister's mouth that in 2019, that is the laws might be the laws have changed. Maybe the laws have changed in 2019. Right, I'm not suggesting that there could not have been a change, but in 2019, which are just well, how many years ago? Five years ago, the prime minister declared that if his statutory declarations were not certified on time, in the time that the integrity commission had specified, then he would have to do it himself. That is what he has just said, and you have just heard it on the prime time television, the prime time news on TVJ in Jamaica. So this is not makeup. This is coming from the prime minister's mouth, right? So can the question is, can the prime minister certify his own statutory declarations? That is the question I would like to know. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. And I read through a bit. I did not do a deep dive into it. I must confess the National Integrity Act, right? And I did not see anything that suggests that the prime minister can declare, not declare, but certify his own statutory declarations. And I am still also going to ask, what does it mean to declare and to certify? I think that they need to give us a clear understanding of what they mean when they say that, well, the Integrity Commission, that is, when they say that the prime minister has not declared or has not Cert has not had his thing certified. All right. So declare means that he has submitted the documents of all his income, his assets and liabilities, and that the Integrity Commission has to verify all of the things that he has on that document, the incomes and the, the liabilities and the assets. And then it will be after verification and assessment and you know, and if it, everything has been approved, then it will be certified. Perhaps that is the process. But the people need to be aware of the process. There is a lack of transparency where that process is concerned. And we've got to really find out what is really happening, right? We've got to find out what is really happening as regards our Jamaican people. Now, let us look at another you know, of the prime minister's words, his own words. We have to just look at what he is saying. And this was a conference that was held. It was not held really for, um, you know, to talk about the prime minister's statutory declarations, but this journalist, she seized the opportunity. She seized upon the opportunity to ask him about it. I think it was something about a special emergency could have been on crime because we, we're having this eternal, these eternal, you know, emergencies on special emergencies, what do you call them? Emergency of whatever you call them, <laughs> right? You know, we have these constant, what do they call them again? The SOSAs or the whatever they call them um, on crime to curb the crime and violence, the rate of crime and violence in Jamaica, right? They have, the, they've created these special emergencies. I think they're called ZOSA or whatever they're called. But this journalist who is a very intelligent young miss, I think she wanted to get at the prime minister's you know, his rationale, his 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 reason for having not had his statutory declaration certified. So she's asking a question, and let's look at what or how he's going to respond. 
right? So let me share my screen with you so that you can see and you can hear what the Prime Minister is actually asserting. ...of this both far and wide. Why hasn't it been certified? And does the public have anything to be concerned about? You would appreciate that this is for the state of emergency. But and yeah, so, you know, those are the questions that we're entertaining at this time. Are you giving... Do you have, do you have questions on the state of emergency for St. James? Well, PM, we don't see it very often, so... That... Please, let her answer the question, because yeah. I... Uh, um... I think that it is not fair to say that you don't see me often. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I'm not sure what is happening here. Wow. We might have to come back to that. We might, I might have to come back to that um, that video. Let me see if I could pull it up back to see. Um, I'm not sure why it, why it stopped playing. Um, oh, but let, yeah, I might have to pass that video. But the prime minister was suggesting, let me see if I could pull it up here from here um, and to have you listen to it again. If you're a business owner, that animated yeah, explainer videos are the this best way to capture advertisement, right? That's the thing with YouTube. So your statutory declaration. Yeah, so let me see if I can share my screen with you. Hopefully, you will be able to see it. If it if we can't see it, if we can't view it this time, I just have to move on, right? Um, it's what it is. Technology sometimes fails. Have not defined by the Integrity Commission. You know the implication of this goes far and wide. Why hasn't it been certified? And does the public have anything to be concerned with? You would appreciate that this is for the state of emergency. But yeah, so, you know, those are the questions that we're entertaining at this time. Are you giving do you have do you have questions on the state of emergency for St. James? Well, PM, we don't see it very often, so that... please let her uh, answer the question because yeah. I uh, um I think that it is not fair to say that you don't see me often. <laughs> because I I have um, uh, we have uh, met up on several tours on other occasions. Uh, the post cap, just to be clear, the, the the post cabinet press briefing is for the the ministers and the various portfolios, and I I want to be clear that uh, on all important matters, uh, my government does provide the opportunity for information to be dispensed to the public and for our ministers to be questioned. Uh, and I'm very happy that the post cabinet is being conducted uh, routinely and consistently. Uh, as it relates to my uh, integrity declarations, uh, I too am concerned that they have not yet certified them. Uh, they have written to me asking various questions. Uh, I have provided answers and they have written to me again that I'm in the process of providing those answers. You will, however, appreciate that it does take some time, and particularly for me, uh, to get two or three days to go through matters and provide answers. I simply have to be very frugal with my time. Uh, and I suspect the same for the Integrity Commission that have to go through uh, several thousands of uh, declarations. But I would expect that they would give some priority to my declarations. Um, I hope to be able to respond to them before the end of this week. So I'm hopeful that they will do their work and uh, provide the nation with the necessary certification. Um, to be clear, I have tried not to comment on the issue because I find myself in an invidious position in that I have to protect and defend most of uh, most times the institutions of the country. So I, you know, my silence should not be interpreted as not wanting to address it, but I do have another role, and that role is to protect and to defend the institutions, the laws that we have put in place. So um, I'm hopeful that uh, in short order, this matter will be resolved.
by the way, you should also know that it is quite routine that uh, the Integrity Commission will write to persons over and over again. And there would be several persons whose uh, statutory declarations are not certified because they are in this continuous process of asking questions and trying to make determinations. Uh, my situation, obviously, would be public, and therefore it would cause some concern. Uh, and so I accept that I, I acknowledge that. But it would not have been the first time that the Integrity Commission would have taken a long time to resolve my matters. And I suspect that as Prime Minister, uh, they would want to be very detailed in, in what they do. I would hope that uh, there is no difference in my treatment than given to others. And I really do not, uh, I would not want to think so. Now, I think Mr. Polness has developed the skill of lying. Because I, right? I have, uh, let me, uh, we have uh, met up on several let me, um, tours and other occasions. Let me, sorry. Uh, the post cap, just to be clear. The, yeah, the, sorry. The let me close this. Press... Okay, yeah, sorry about that. I seem not to have closed that window. Yeah, but, you know, it seems to me that Mr. Patterson, Mr. Holness, I'm sorry, Mr. Patterson, for calling your name, it's Mr. Holness, Mr. Andrew Holness, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, has developed this very artful manner of lying to the Jamaican people. Now, the fact of the matter is that this has been ongoing, and he knows that, he, he admitted that, that is an ongoing thing. It's a matter that, you know, for years, it, for some time, has been ongoing where his Saturday declarations have not been certified on time. Now, shouldn't he be holding, as Prime Minister of Jamaica, the members of the Integrity Commission to account? And should some firing not, not be done, he should fire those who are not you know, working expeditiously at having, in, you know, his statutory declarations certified. I think there should be some firing here because obviously somebody has to be held to account, either the prime minister himself or the members of the integrity commission. Now, what if teachers should be holding up exam reports and exam, you know, you know, uh, assessment? results of their students would that be tolerable even though they have lots of things to do right sometimes teachers have to spend the entire night up to finish you know their assessment reports nights upon nights marking and responding and commenting on students work but they know they have a deadline to, deadline to meet and they have to meet that deadline and if the deadline is not met it comes with consequences Right. So why don't we have consequences? Why aren't there consequences for the prime ministers or the members of the integrity commissions? Their lack of productivity in ensuring that the prime minister's statutory declarations have or are submitted on time. Right. And this thing about, you know, he's wondering they're doing a detailed account of his his. Um, his declarations, it's a summary, right? We, the, 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 it's not a detailed account. We know that it's not a detailed account. It's a summary of his statutory declarations. So something is fundamentally wrong and we do not know who here to blame, whether it's the prime minister or the members of the integrity commission, because all they give us are circular responses. It's obscure, right? And also abstract responses. Oh, it will be re released shortly. Shortly when? Where? At what time? What day? Right? Because they know they don't have to say that to you. They can do whatever they want to do because Jamaicans are people without brains and who will not hold their politicians to account. And the media houses, you know, look at how the journalist, she just had to just sit and accept what he had to say. She could not stand up and, you know, and begin to question and to challenge his such nonsensical statement. Because what, what he said, you know, to his response to her was utter nonsense. Right? Was utter nonsense. And why can't Mr. Holness also employ somebody who can help him, an accountant that who can help him with 
submitting a summary of, not a detailed account again, a summary of his income liabilities and his assets. Yes, of course, he will have to look at it and examine it and to ensure that everything is in order. But he can. He has that money. He's rich enough to do that. Right? To do that. But he's pretending as if the members of the Integrity Commission are working laboriously. And he too has done his part and he's wondering why they have not done it. I mean, what if there was somebody, you know, a teacher, somebody who should have written a, a report for him, uh, you know, a speech for him. What if that speech was not delivered on time? How would that impact him and his work and his job performance? Right? Now, if this is how the National Integrity Commission, the Integrity Commission is, is behaving, the watchdog, the, the anti-corruption watchdog as they like to proclaim, what should what what are we what do we expect of our politicians or what should we expect of them? Right? Because this should be demonstrating to us that our politicians are not serious about national development and about being held to account. They're not serious. As far as I'm concerned, they are above the laws. They are above the laws of Jamaica. And there are two Jamaicas, as I have been intimating. We have a set of laws for the politician where they can ride above them, where they are immune, they are immune to these laws, while citizens have to obey these laws. And if they don't, then they are going to be held accountable. Right? The Prime Minister has absolutely no excuse. And I'm wondering if I could pull up, you know, a situation in which we had Zara Burton, and Zara Burton is an investigative journalist, a Jamaican, you know, investigative journalist. And she did a, a an interesting interview with some of these politicians um, in regards to their, you know, taxes and other things, their statutory declarations. I think it was more, it had to do more with taxes, their, you know, um, refusal and their non-compliance with paying taxes. So Zara Burton and Jamaican politician taxes. I just want to pull this video up. I should have done it, uh, not um, taxes, you know, so that you can see some of the responses given by these people, right? I, it, it was an interesting sort of interview that an interaction that she had with the these people. Um, perhaps I can't find. Maybe I'll deal with another in another video, right? I will deal with the this sort of yeah. I'll just do another video with that because I'm not going to be able to pull this up right now. So thank you so much. We I hope that you have learned something from the video that I have just you know done. But my question is, what is really the purpose of the Integrity Commission, and why have they not given us a comprehensive and transparent response? with regard to the prime minister's non-certification of his statutory declarations. Why? Why is it taking such a long time? We know that the prime minister also was late in 2019, and had it not been for the pressure of the oppositional party, that they would not have submitted, he would not have submitted his statutory declarations. Or, you know, because it was way... It had way past the time, and Mr. Holness had not submitted in 2019 his statutory declarations. In 2021, again, now we are hearing that that two have not yet been certified. Right? And he still continues to be prime minister, as if nothing is wrong with that. This is talking, this document is going to include his income, his assets and his liabilities. So Jamaica has the right to know about these matters, right? Jamaicans have the right, it is their right, Mr. Prime Minister, to know, to have an intimate knowledge of what is happening as far as your income, your assets and your liabilities are concerned, right? They have a right to know 
and you have an obligation to submit and to have your statutory declarations certified, right? That is your obligation. And this is a dereliction of duty. And you are not admitting to that, right? You're, you, what you're doing, as I can see, you are absolving yourself of all culpabilities. Right? It's national, it's the Integrity Commission. And then the Integrity Commission says that they can't certify your declarations. What is happening? Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like, you share, and you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in another video when I shall upload another important um, question and matter that is happening in Jamaica. Thank you so much. And I'll see you then. All the best. Ciao.